interrupt our regularly scheduled programming to bring you this local Pueblo sports broadcast. This is CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves basketball on Fox Sports Pueblo 1350. Let's head courtside and join the voice of the pack, Jim Brooks. And good evening, everybody. Welcome to Masari Arena for tonight's Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference doubleheader. As the Thunderwolves set to take on the Yellow Jackets. Fear the sting of Black Hill State, a rematch of a game played last Saturday night up at the Young Center in beautiful Spearfish, South Dakota. They're right back at it this week. Both teams had games last night. Of course, Thunderwolves here knocked off South Dakota Mines. Defensive juggernaut as the, the uh, Thunderwolves have become. 71-45 to 45 was the final. Black Hill State, they had a, a nice victory of their own down in Las Vegas, New Mexico, uh, defeating the Cowgirls 76-51. to 51. So right now, Thunderwolves sit atop the conference at 8-0. Fort Lewis a half game behind them at 8-1. Their one loss, of course, to the Thunderwolves. Metro State is at 5-3. and three. Mines won today. They're 6-2, and two, actually, have jumped Metro State now into second place in the conference. So Metro and Westminster. Metro State at 5-3. and three. Westminster drops to 5-4. and four. Black Hill State with their victory last night, along with Mesa's victory. They are both 5-3. and three. South Dakota Mines is at 4-4. Four and four. Regis also with a win last night, 5-3. It's a jumbled up mess in the middle of the pack here. This is what I'm trying to get at. Thunderwolves uh, trailed Black Hill State last week, entering the fourth quarter, but had a terrific fourth quarter, outscoring the Yellow Jackets 21-9 to win the ball game by 11. They did it with uh, defense in that ball game in that fourth quarter, really turned things around. Plus, the Thunderwolves overcame the loss of Katie Cunningham, who fouled out uh, just a little short of midway through the fourth quarter, and the team rose up and still found a way without their floor general to win that ball game. We'll come back after this timeout. We'll talk to the head coach, Curtis Lloyd. You are listening to the Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap House pregame show. Thunderwolves basketball on Fox Sports Pueblo. And welcome back to the Thunderwolves pregame show brought to you by Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap House. Joining me now, head coach Curtis Lloyd. And Curtis, one thing we're noticing about your ball club, you're scoring more and you're giving up less. That's a good combination. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, is that true? <laughs> because if so, that's what we're trying to work toward. You know, I mean, the scoring really isn't, isn't a factor for us, um, but the defense is, and so that's that's really good to hear. Well, you're holding teams into the 40s the last two ball games, and uh, these aren't bad offensive teams you're facing, but you're making them look bad. Well, I mean, I, I think the commitment to my players and the kids are, you know, on here, and we're trying to do the defensive first, you know, philosophy and having that mindset, which is very grateful right now because it is a tough conference and uh, a tough, uh, even more tough schedule. And so any little, you know, any little positive we can get out of it, we're just going to take it and run with it. And uh, it seems like your ball club's able to adjust on the fly. Last night, it was a conscious effort to take away Molly Roar. You can tell that. They were double teaming her, sometimes triple teaming her, but you're still scoring the basketball able to rotate it around well the thing about you know this team is probably every opponent we play will take away molly and so you know and i think i appreciate the work that you know the extra work that these girls have put in because you know it helps molly out that everybody else is sharing uh the basketball shooting the basketball and playing with a lot of confidence right now well and speaking of molly i suppose it's probably a point of emphasis also hey molly they're going to double team you got to do some different things so you're working on that well you know we work on that every single day we work on you know the actions in and out back in again different cuts so she she knows it you know but that's again that's part of her um you know that's part of her growth too because you know when you're good like that you're on the radar well, we don't see this often in the conference but tonight's opponent is a team you played only a week ago kind of like a home and home series they're very familiar with what you do yeah again we gotta you gotta love that schedule but uh, you know, 
it, it helps us, you know, to go ahead and get these two out the way and then kind of move on to the next. But uh, we're just going to concentrate on what we need to do and try and come out with the same mindset and the same intensity as last night. On Black Hill State, their team that prides on turning you over. Last week, you were the team that turned them over. Yeah, you know, we did a few things, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're ready for it, but that's why we play the games. And, uh, you know, if people are still coming out, please come on out because we need your support. All right, let's go get a win. Thank you. Go Thunderwolves. Thunderwolves head coach Curtis Lloyd back with the starting lineups. Opening tip-off all comes your way next. Thunderwolves basketball on Fox Sports Pueblo. Welcome back. Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap House pregame show. Thunderwolves getting set to play the uh, Yellow Jackets here at women's basketball. Teams are heading toward their respective benches here as we get ready to uh, get into a little bit more of our pregame activities here for the uh, folks that are in attendance at Masari Arena tonight. Hopefully tonight we're welcoming everybody on the uh, RMAC Television Network. We had a lot of problems last night with that, evidently, here. But uh, we just do our thing on the radio here on AM 1350 Fox Sports Pueblo. It's up to the college and the university here to uh, make their stuff work. Our stuff works. <laughs> they have to make their stuff work, and if it does, then they use us. If not, you scramble and find a radio or your iHeart radio application, and you listen to the ball game here. So uh, hopefully they've got that squared away for tonight's ball game. We'll come back after this timeout. We'll have the starting lineups, the opening tip-off. It all comes your way next. Thunderwolves basketball on Fox Sports Pueblo. Welcome back to Masari Arena. Let's join Dave Miller for tonight's starting lineups. A five foot six inch red shirt junior from Gillette, Wyoming. Number three, Julia Simmons. A five foot ten inch red shirt junior from Oneida, South Dakota. Number ten, Remy Winces. Five foot ten inch senior from Cheyenne, Wyoming. Number twelve, Rachel Erickson. A six foot two inch freshman from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Number forty, Katie Messler. And a five foot ten inch red shirt junior from Elk Point, South Dakota, number forty two, Kelly Bertram. The Yellow Jackets are coached by Mark Knorr. <laughs> and now the starting lineup for your CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves. A five foot nine inch senior from Vancouver, Washington, number 32, Tule Sue Anderson. A five foot eight inch senior from Moreno Valley, California, number 14, Taylor Long. A six foot three inch junior from Greenwood Village, Colorado, number 42, Molly Roar. A six foot one is junior from Loomis, California, number 33, Lauren Hines. And a six foot senior from Aurora, Colorado, number five, Katie Cunningham. Student assistant Brooke Cunningham, assistant coach Sarah Miles, and head coach of the Thunderwolves, Curtis Lloyd. And we thank Dave Miller, each and every home game here at Messiah Arena, bringing the starting lineups. Thunderwolves in her home white. Blue numerals, red trim as usual. Black Hill State, the Yellow Jackets in their road green. Gold numerals. A little bit of white trim sprinkled in there. Officials for tonight's game. I know two of the three. I can't remember the other one. But we'll get our sheet a little. Joel Hafley's the, uh, the main dude. Mr. Clean, as we like to call him. Kevin Kaziski. And another Mr. Clean. I thought the, uh, the clean shaven head look in here tonight. Tap controlled by the Yellow Jackets. We sit here on Dave Socher Press Row. Here at Masari Arena, glad to have you along with us here tonight. Here's Erickson driving to the free throw line, goes out beside right side to Siemens. They work the ball around the perimeter. Thunderwolves opening a man-to-man -man defense. Here's a drive by Messler to the uh, right elbow, hands it off inside, backing in, right hand hooking up, no good, and the rebound to Tule Sue for the Thunderwolves. Hands it off to Cunningham, come back the other way. 
That miss was by Messler inside, the big freshman out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Here's Cunningham, our star of the game last night. Hine on the left wing, kills the dribble. Up top to Rohr. Rohr, one bounce now to Hine on the left wing. Ten on the shot clock. Now to Tulay. Sioux Thunder was looking a little bit of disarray here. Got to get something going. Now Cunningham gets a screen, drives to the baseline, hands it off in the quarter to Hine. Two on the shot clock. Hine goes up with a running right hander down the lane and lays it in. They used every second of the shot clock, and they get a bucket just as it expires. Two to nothing pack on top. Here's Siemens. To bring it across the timeline. Gets it ahead to Wenches. Wenches hands it off to Bertram. Now on top to Wenches. He drives into the paint. Cut off there. Now feeds it free throw line. Messler missed it. Rebound to Taylor Long. To bring it out of there herself. Brings it across the timeline. Holds things up. Now skips it up top to Hine. Top of the key extended. Right side. Ball deflected out of bounds. Oh, boy. That was last touch. Looked like by Erickson. But maybe uh, Tule Sue got a piece of it after it was deflected. So the turnover gives it back to Black Hill State. There was no argument from Tule Sue. So evidently it clipped her hand as well there on the deflection. Here's Erickson bringing it across the timeline. Hands it off to Wenches. Wenches feeds it. Now right side Erickson drives to the baseline. Cut off. Beg your pardon now, Erickson with the ball. Drives to the right elbow. A little runner on the way. No good. Rebound loose and Long rips it out of there for the Thunderwolves. Fires it ahead to Tule Sue. She dribbles to the left wing. Now starts to drive to the baseline. Goes all the way in. Running right hander. Missed it. And the rebound to Messler. Messler hands it off to Siemens. Siemens across the timeline. On to the left wing. Steps back. Now drives to the free throw line. Down the lane. Kicks it outside. Three-pointer on the way by Bertram. Is no good. Katie Cunningham with a rebound. She'll bring it across the timeline for the Thunderwolves. Races to the free throw line. Spins in the lane. Dishes off to Aurora. But the ball's knocked away out of bounds. It'll belong to the Thunderwolves. Early substitution here as uh, Lindsey Rich into the ball game for Black Hill State. She just became eligible last week. Here's Cunningham on the baseline. On to the left wing, just yo-yoing it outside there. Now reverses, drives to the baseline, goes underneath the basket. Reverse shot, no, but she drew the foul. Or nope, she stepped on the baseline, beg your pardon. It's down the way from me to the right. And the whistle was for her stepping on the baseline. So the turnover to Black Hill State. Two turnovers here on the Thunderwolves. Back the other way, it's Siemens. Kicks it outside. Now they come way up top of it to Wenches. On to the left side to Erickson. Lobs it down to the block. Here's Rich turning. Shot blocked by Rohr. Gets the rebound, though. Goes up blocked again by Rohr. And the rebound to Long. Fires it ahead. Tule Sue in the corner. Fakes the three. Drives in. Skips across court to Long. Has to save it on the right side. They step back, she'll fire a long three-pointer, missed it, and the rebound to Rich. Gets it ahead to Bertram, Bertram across the timeline. Here she starts to drive to the right uh, elbow, now comes outside to Siemens. Now they go on to the left wing to Wenches. Wenches, top of the key ball, knocked away, cutting him on the deck, trying to get the steal, but it's picked up by Erickson. Now hands it off to Wenches. 11 on the shot clock here. Thunderwolves with tenacious defense. That's become their calling card. Here's Siemens. Drives in from the left. Stops. Fade away on the way. Air ball. Rebound to Cunningham. Two to nothing. Thunderwolves on top here. Cunningham brings it across the timeline. Dribbles right in front of the Yellow Jacket bench. Now spins. Drives to the baseline. Cut off there. Comes outside to Hine. Hine a couple of bounces. Now goes left side to Anderson. 11 on the shot clock. And it was a little slow to get into their offensive sets in this game so far. Now Tule Sue going to start a drive. In from the right. Kicks it into the corner. Cunningham now to long back to Cunningham as the shot clock expires. Off the back iron. No good. Hine with a rebound. Feeds it to Rohr. Rohr gets it outside to Anderson. Right side to Long. Long starts to drive in the paint. Step back. 15-footer off the back iron. No good. And the rebound to Siemens. Siemens will bring it across the timeline. Gives it up top now to Bertram. Still two to nothing. Thunderbolt's on top. We're four minutes in here to this first quarter. Here's Erickson down the lane. She goes, plows into Hine. Offensive foul. And Hine, a little worse for the wear there, gets up. Thought she might have the uh, air knocked out of her for a second, but she's all right. Takes a couple deep breaths. Her sister's in attendance here tonight. Came over and said hi before the ball game. That's always nice. Now we've got a uh, stoppage. You're going to get a substitution. It's uh, Cortez Standing Bear. Sophomore guard out of Pine Ridge, South Dakota. Into the game now for the Yellow Jackets. Still 2 to nothing. Back on top. 
You see this once in a while in the RMAC on the uh, second night of the back-to-back scheduling. Teams just a little slow out of the gate. On the Saturday night special. Here's Hine, top of the key. Moves into the free line, down the lane. Goes up with a running left hander. Had it blocked. He goes out of bounds. Last touch by Hine. Well, Black Hill State, they give up 51 a game. The Thunderwolves allow 56 a game. So it kind of gives you an idea. we got two pretty good defensive ball clubs here. And they played to a, a 60-49 final last week. And here's a walk in the lane. And Spearfish. Kai Adams checks in. Hine comes out. Now substitution for Black Hill State as Wenches is back in, and Siemens gets her first break of the game. Always oh, got to assert his influence, doesn't he? Mr. Clean. Inbounds pass to Cunningham. Cunningham brings it across the timeline. On the right wing, just yo-yoing it there. Now gives it to Long. Long looking for a screen. Tried to play pick and roll that time with Adams. Now dribbles to the left wing. Kills the dribble. Hands it off to Anderson. Eight on the shot clock. Tule Suga to go one-on-one down the lane. Running right-hander shot. Block foul. Tule Su trying to make something happen on her own that time. And got stripped, but she was fouled. Fouls on Standing Bear. Second team foul against Black Hill State. And it'll be Tule Sue Anderson to the free throw line. Third all-time leading scorer now in Thunderbolts history after last night. Free throw up and good. First basket since, uh, what, about the 9.30 mark. First free points, anyway. Haven't had a basket since then. Remember, the Thunderbolts scored as the shot clock expired on their first possession of the game. Second free throw good right through there for Tule Sue. Four to nothing. Pack on top. Here's Winches across the timeline. Almost lost it, but now regains. Thunderbolts tenacious. Here on defense. Looks like they're going to play a little trap here. A little 3 2 3 trap. They get it in the paint. They come outside. Cortez standing there, faking the three pointer in the corner to Winches. She fires. Missed it. Long rebound. Adams has it. Fires it ahead to Cunningham. Cunningham across the timeline. Tried to play pick and roll, but they switched. Double team now on Cunningham. They hedge out on her. Backdoor feed to Adams. Oh, she passes off the roar. Layup good. Well, Adams. Had a layup, but she passed it up. Gets the assist instead. Here's Wenches. It's six to nothing. Pack on top. Thunder will stay in their two-three trap here. Beat it into the paint. Backing in. Turnaround shot on the way. Foul called on Molly Roar. Timeout on the court. Four ten to go here in the first quarter. Thunderwolves lead it six to nothing. Thunderwolves basketball brought to you by Southern Colorado Fleet and Service on Fox Sports Pueblo. Six to nothing. Thunderwolves on top as they've held Black Hill State scoreless here through the first media timeout. But they're going to get a chance for free throws here. It'll be Lindsey Rich step into the free throw line. Free throw on the way, it's good. Second toss, good. Rich hits a pair. Okay, come up and help, all right. 4-10 to go here in the first quarter. Thunderbolts lead at 6-2. Long with it. Gets it ahead to Cunningham. Brings it across the timeline. Dribbles to the right wing. Just yo-yoing it outside here. Picked up by Erickson. Now right side to Tulay Sue. Roar posting up inside with her frontner. Now to Anderson. Lobs it down low to Roar. But a good play on defense. But comes up with it. Outside to uh, Anderson. Left side corner to Long. Drives the baseline. Little runner on the way. Got it. 
Taylor Long hits. Thunderbolts late in the shot clock here a few times, but they've been able to come through and score. They lead it 8-2. to two. Outside, it's Wenches. Uses the screen from Messler. Down the lane, she goes, shot blocked by Roar. Says, get it out of here. Obviously hasn't read her press credentials. She is the RMAC Defensive Player of the Year, by the way. Here's Erickson to trigger it on the baseline. Well, outside. Move it to Standing Bear. Now on to the right side. Erickson, she's a threat to fire three-pointers. Goes down the lane this time instead with the left hand. Missed it. Rebound batted outside. Comes right to Black Hill State. Wenches for three. Short. Rebound. Adams had it. Lost it. Ball loose on the deck. On the baseline. Picked up by the Yellow Jackets and thrown away as Tule Sue comes up with a steal. She brings it across the timeline. Nifty dribbling there. Into the corner. Long skips across court. Cunningham fakes. Won't take the shot. Drives into the paint. Goes all the way around. Back pass to Roar and lays it in. And a two-time out. Yellow Jackets. 2.54 to go here in the first quarter. It's a bonus 30. Thunderwolves basketball brought to you by Southern Colorado Fleet and Service on Fox Sports Pueblo. Tremendous passing there by the Thunderwolves and uh, Katie Cunningham. Highlight real assist. Kai Adams also has a, a great assist in this game. They lead it 10 to 2 here. Black Hill State with the ball. Siemens skips it onto the right side to Erickson. Up top to Siemens. Siemens drives around a screen, kicks it outside. Now they come up top. Now they go into the lane, turning with it. On the way, left-hander, no, but a foul. As Messler got it to the hoop, and she was fouled by Hine. Nope, they're going to call it on Adams instead. Free throws upcoming for Katie Messler. Messler on the year, only a 54% free throw shooter. First one up and good, though. Makes her 8 for 14 on the year. Doesn't get to the line off on the freshman. Uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and splashes that one right through there. Makes you wonder how she missed 6 already this year. 10 to 4. Here's some uh, full court pressure by Black Hill State. Just making the Thunderbolts work a little bit. Cunningham gets it across the timeline. Goes right side to Long. Long holds it there. Skips it cross court to Cunningham, and then she's whacked and fouled. And the foul going to be No, I don't have her. I gotta get her number on my chart here. I beg your pardon, I'm sorry. Danielle Noble, Junior. Left her off my sheet for some reason. Operator error. Here's the inbounds pass to Hine underneath the basket. Saves it, but she was fouled. She got shoved out of bounds. So Hine's been on the deck a few times in this game. She's all right, though. She's tough. Roar checks in. Adams will come out. Here's the inbounds. Pass to Long, and she is fouled on her way to the basket. Oh, man, she plowed right into the knee of Cunningham, but Cunningham is all right. That was kind of scary. Cunningham limping a little bit. He had, that's almost like a football player standing around the pile, and somebody hits him down low, and sometimes they lose a knee that way. She was all right. Here's Long to the free throw line. Shoot a pair. First toss up. Hits the front iron, but rolls through there. Long on the year. Excellent free throw shooter, 84%. Second toss, good. It is 12 to 4. Thunderwolves on top by 8. Long comes out. And Knopfel into the game for the first time. Knopfel, leading scorer last night for the Thunderwolves, had 16. Here's a feed on the right side. Here's Martinez. Now up top to Siemens. Siemens gives it to Martinez. They work the ball around the perimeter. Tule Sue out, hounding there. And the ball off. Thunderbolt switching on defense everywhere, and they get the steal as Cunningham has it. She's going to angle toward the right wing, goes cross court to Tule Sue, but lost it, and it goes out of bounds. It'll pass a little too tall. And Katie kind of smiling nervously, saying, ah, man, that should have been a better pass than that. We're not going to hold it against her, though, folks. 
didn't have a turnover in last night's game. That's a turnover tonight, so we'll give her one a weekend. Here's the ball outside. Now into the corner, driving the baseline. Can't get the shot off. They go to the free throw line to Messler. She drives into the paint, takes it right at Rohr. Missed it. Rebound to Cunningham. She has Canoffel ahead of the field. Finds her. Down the lane. Up with the layup. Good. Canoffel taking a page out of the old Central Wildcat playbook. The cherry pick. Jim Ranson special. It's 14 to 4. Here's Siemens. Siemens way outside. We're down to a minute five to go here in the quarter. Trying to step into a three. Can't get that off. They go to the high post. Messler turns, faces. Now we'll just launch from the free throw line and hit. They left her wide open and she buried it. It's 14 to 6. Thunderwolves by 8. Cunningham now back the other way for the pack. Brings it across the timeline. Hands it off to Knoffel. Knoffel dribbles around a screen. Another screen. Hands it off to Hine. Down the lane. She goes running left. Hander doesn't go. Rohr has the rebound and is stripped. And the ball goes out of bounds. Bodies hit the deck. It'll belong to the Thunderbolts. Evidently a clean block. Tule Suda triggered in on the baseline. Gets it into Cunningham. Tule Suda trying to post up down on the block. They can't get it to her. Now they go to Canoffel instead. And off on that looking for Roar, and the ball batted away, comes right to Cunningham. Now outside, two laces wide open, three-pointer on the way, off the iron, no good. Roar gets the rebound, turns, faces, drives into the paint, stops, goes outside. Knoffel, three-pointer on the way, off the iron, no good. Cunningham with a rebound, goes up in traffic, this is off the Roar. Layup good, they call it for traveling. Siemens bringing it across the timeline. Dribbles to the right wing. Now up top to Messler. Turns, faces, missed it. Rebound into the corner. Messler has it at the buzzer. Missed it. And we're going to stay right here for a minute because we got some action out on the court. Curtis Lloyd wants a piece of Joel Heffley here. All right, Heffley. I'm thinking of the old congressman, aren't I? Heffley. <laughs> now he's getting his explanation. We'll go to a timeout. Thunderbolts on top, 14 to 6 at the end of one. Thunderbolts basketball brought to you by Southern Colorado Fleet and Service on Fox Sports Pueblo. 14 to 6. Thunderbolts on top. Hmm. One for 14 in that first quarter was Black Hill State. It's a cool 7%. Thunderbolts get the ball first to start this second quarter. Here's Cunningham bringing it across the timeline. Oops, almost walked with it. Gets rid of it. Now to Hine. Hine dribbles to the left wing. Kills the dribble there. Goes down low to Roar. She's in. Left hand hook up. Good on a foul. It'll count. And Roar to the free throw line. A chance to complete the three-point play. Foul is on Alyssa Martinez. Free throw good. 17 to 6. Thunderwolves by 11. Like a stranglehold. Try playing basketball in a vice when you're playing against the Thunderwolves defense. Here's Martinez. Dribbles to the free line. Stops and pops and hits. Well, that's one way. Get a little movement. Work around a screen. You get a little opening to hit. And Martinez buries it. 17 to 8. Thunderwolves by 9. Cunningham brings it across the timeline. Hands it off up top to Hine. Hine goes left side to Anderson. Anderson will work around the screen. Drives into the paint. Kicks it into the corner to Cunningham. Katie holds it there, trying to get it to Roar. One bounce, looking for it. Can't get it to her. Eight on the shot clock. Now to Roar on the block. Wheels goes up with the left hand. Off the back iron, no good. Hines strong for the rebound. Rips it out of there. Gets it to Tule Sue. Cross court to Cunningham. Thought about the three, won't take it. Now hands it off to Roar. Roar backs her way into the paint. Goes up again with the left hand. This time missed it again. Shoved out of the way was Tule Sue. And they get the rebound, and they are going to call Tule Sue for the reach. Hey, Katie. 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 Instead, they're going to call it on Katie Cunningham on the push. 
Could have taken your pick there. Get it across the timeline. Anna Cass into the ball game now for Black Hill State. On to the right side. Bertram. Over, over. Up top to Martinez. Drives into the paint. Throws the ball away, but it's chased down outside. And they hand the ball off to Siemens. Eight on the shot clock. Siemens moves into the baseline. Cut off there. Turn around. Force. Hit the side of the backboard. No good. Roar with the rebound. Ahead to Anderson. Tule Su. In from the right. One player to beat. Goes down the lane. Offensive foul called on Tule Su Anderson. Foul number one on Tule Su. Second team foul on the Thunderwolves. Here's Siemens for the Yellow Jackets. They trail it by nine. It's 17 to eight. Pack on top. Pass out up top to Cass. Cass picked up by Hine, then threw it away. She was trying to get it down on the block to Rich and threw it right by her. Well, it's a turnover to the Thunderwolves. Fifth turnover of the game on Black Hill State. Thunderwolves also with five turnovers in the game so far. Black Hill stays. They force 23 turnovers a game. Here's Cunningham. Brings it across the timeline. Goes up top to Anderson. Left side. Knoffel. Knoffel stops. Gives it off to Tule Sue. She's at the top of the key. Holds it high. Now starts a drive. And is stripped and fouled. Or no, we got a foul, an offensive foul away from the ball, or maybe it's three seconds. I'm not sure what they called here. It was away from the ball. They're going to call it on Lauren Hine. Must have been an illegal screen away from the ball. Tule Sue out. Long comes in. Bounce pass to Siemens. Siemens gets it ahead to Winches. On to the left side to Martinez. Now up top to Wenches. He drives into the paint, takes it in. On Roar, missed it. Rebound to Cunningham. And Katie now. Bring it across the timeline. Way outside. Gives it to Hine. About 35 feet from the basket. Top of the key extended. Left side to Long. Now down low to Cunningham. They're posting her up on the block. She turns. Wheels. Comes outside to Long. Down to eight on the shot clock. Feed it to Cunningham. She drives underneath the hoop. Gives it off to Hine. Now on top. Here's Knopfel for three. Got it. Knopfel with five. 20 to eight. Thunderbolts. Biggest lead of the game. They lead by 12. Here is Siemens. Brings it across the timeline. Looks around a screen. Goes out top. Here's a three-point on the way. It's no good. Cunningham with the rebound. Rips it away from her defender. Foul called on Black Hill State. Good job. Lauren, home, home. And a foul called on Winches. Inbounds pass to Cunningham. Thunderbolts lead at 20 to 8 here. 6.40 to go, second quarter. Here's Cunningham. She'll bring it across the timeline for the Thunderbolts. Skips it left side to Long. Long way outside. Now it starts to drive in. She's on the wing now. Kills the dribble. Goes to the uh, corner to Cunningham. Now lobs it to Roar. Roar backs her way in. Turns. Faces. Back to Cunningham. Now return feed to Roar. Backs her way into the paint. Goes up strong. Left it short, though. And the rebound to Martinez. Now they hand it off to Siemens. Siemens works around a screen. Now, 10 shot blocked by Knopfel from behind. Oh, man, it is just so tough to play offense against this team. Cunningham brings it across the timeline for the Thunderwolves. Dribbles to the left wing. Kills the dribble. Into the corner to Knopfel. Knopfel dribbles around a screen. They plays pick and roll with Roar. Roar has it now on the block. Return feed to Knopfel. Can't get the three off. Goes to Cunningham. She fakes the three. Now Knopfel's wide open. Three on the way. Short. Rebound. Hine working hard. Had it, and she was fouled. And the foul is on Keeley Bertram. Messler into the game. 
Gabby Doxtater into the game for the first time for Black Hill State. Thunderwolves ball up by 12. Inbounds pass to Roar. Roar being whacked at. Gets rid of it now to Long. Now to Knopfel, to Hine. Free throw line, turns, faces, goes to Long. Lob it down to the block to Roar. Backs her way into the paint. Wheels goes up with the left hand, draws the foul. That will be on Messler. So Roar to the line, a chance for two free throws here. One for one from the line in this game. On the year, 87% free throw shooter. 63 out of 72 with the up-to-date stats. Free throw up and good. Thunderwolves is a team, 79%. One of the leaders in the conference. They make 15 a game. Black Hill State on the other side. They get 12 free throw hits a game. Second toss, good. Roar has nine. 22 to eight. Thunderwolves by 14. That's their biggest lead of the game. Black Hill State has never led in this game. The game has never been tied other than 0-0. And that doesn't count. There's a feed underneath. Backdoor feed. They missed the layup, though, and Roar had the rebound, and she is fouled. And now we'll walk down to the other end as that puts Black Hill State over the limit, and Molly Roar will go down to shoot another pair of free throws. Even Tundra down to our left likes it, roaring her approval. So Molly to the free throw line, shooting a pair. That was on Messler, that's her second. This toss is good by Molly Roar. She'll have one more. Noble checks into the game now for the Yellow Jackets. Second toss, no good. So Molly proves she's human. Back the other way come the Yellow Jackets. Ball outside. There's a move in by Doc Stater. Cut off at the free throw line. Now gives it off to Bertram. He's dribbling it around the perimeter. Now on the left side to Doc Stater. Up top to Bertram. She moves in on Hine. Cuts her off. Skips it left side. Doc Stater for three. Off the back iron, no good. Rebound to Tule Su. Who's back into the game after a brief rest. Anderson will bring it across the timeline for the pack. They lead it 23 to 8 on their biggest lead of the game here. Tule Su dribbles to the right wing, right in front of the Black Hills bench. Tule Su wheels now, drives the baseline, cut off, skips it outside, threw it away. Taken away by the Yellow Jackets. Back the other way they come. Cross court feed, left side. Doc Stater goes underneath. Shot block foul on Knopfel. She got her money's worth there, but she whacked Erickson, and Erickson will go to the free throw line to shoot a pair. First foul of the game on Canoffel brings us to our media timeout. 4.14 to go here in the second quarter. Thunderwolves on top, 23-8. to eight. Thunderwolves basketball brought to you by Southern Colorado Fleet and Service on Fox Sports Pueblo. And welcome back to Masari Arena. We've uh, finally got my lineup chart squared away. I aired earlier when I uh, said that it's the... Uh, First game's back for uh, Lindsey Rich. I erred there. It's a first. Danielle Noble is the player that became eligible at the break. She's in her third game now. Her first game was last week against the Thunderbolts. Also played last night against the New Mexico Highlands. Rich has been around all year. Second toss good. So one out of two for Erickson. Makes it 24 to eight. 24 to 9, beg your pardon. 14 point lead. 24 3 to 9. Thunderwolves lead it by 14. Cunningham right in front of the uh, Black Hills bench, a little careless with the dribble and lost it, and it's tied up in the alternating possession. It belongs to Black Hills State. So, uh, a rare careless play right there by uh, Katie. Across the timeline. Here's Standing Bear. And the ball knocked away by Katie Kenny. I'm almost uh, hitting the ball at me saying, easy, Jimbo. <laughs> Inbounds pass to Standing Bear. No room to breathe here. 
Drive to the baseline. That's a nice pass. And the left missed, though. And the rebound to Anderson. And there's a whack and a foul in the backcourt by Danielle Noble. And she just came down hard on the uh, right tricep that time of Tule Sue Anderson. And it'll be two free throws for Tule Sue at the other end. Well, I see the Chiefs lost today. Had a 21-3 lead at one point in that game. Gave it all away. As the Titans with three touchdowns in the second half to come back and defeat. Chiefs. Second toss. Good for Tule Sushi. She hits a pair. Thunderbolts just continue to increase their biggest lead of the game. It's now 16. They lead it 25 to 9. The ball on the right side. Boy, in your face defense on Bertram there uh, by Hine. They feed it into the paint. And where's the travel there? Shot blocked by Rohr. How many times can you change your pivot foot? I thought only LeBron James could do that. Inbounds pass comes outside to Bertram. Out of Standing Bear. Over on the right side to Bertram. Out top to Erickson. Six on the shot clock. Erickson drives into the paint. Running left-hander. Offensive foul. It's not on the driver. It's on the screener. And the foul going to be called on uh, Rich. It's her first. Here's Cunningham with it for the Thunderbolts. Brings it across the timeline. We're at 3.05 mark here of the first half. Thunderbolts lead at 25 to 9. Roar with it way outside, outside of her office here. Gives it off to Cunningham. Offensive foul called on the Thunderbolts. Foul on Cunningham pushing off as she fought over the top of the screen. Her second foul. 2.56 to go here in the first half. Curtis Lloyd thinking about it. He'll probably get her out after this possession, I would think. Over, over. Here's Siemens driving to the right wing. Goes on to the right side. It's a standing bear down on the block. Turn around. Hook shot up. No good. Cutting in with a rebound on the block. And Cunningham will bring it across the timeline. No fouls. No fouls. Give it off to Tule Sue. Works around a screen. And a foul here on Black Hill State. Not exactly clear what happened. I had the uh, screen in front of me. The screen in the purple shirt. He's working hard. Gabby Doxtater with the foul. And Tule Sue Anderson to the free throw line. Good job. Free throw up and good. Anderson yet to get a field goal in this game, but she's making a living from the line, 5 of 5. Second toss, swish. Six points for Tule Sue. It's 27 to 9. Thunderbolts by 18. Siemens onto the right wing. Hands the ball off. Thunderbolts just continue to scrap on defense. Here's a drive into the paint by Eric, or into the corner. Martinez has the shot blocked by Hine and the rebound to Roar. To Cunningham. Cunningham will get it across the timeline. Drives to the free throw line. Cut off there. Now starts to drive to the baseline. Kills the dribble there. Goes outside. Tule Su will take the three-pointer. Off the iron, no good. Hein hit the rebound. No, they call it for the foul. Going over the back, evidently. So that puts the Thunderbolts over the limit. So we come down to the other end. We'll shoot free throws here for Black Hill State. It will be Gabby Dockstater at the line. Free throws up off the back iron, no good. Dox Tater on the year, 75%, but it's a small sample size. She was 6 for 8 coming into here tonight. 
And that's going to be a lane violation on the Thunderwolves. Free throw, good. Doesn't matter. It'll count. Well, it's too late. Sue couldn't hold her water, as our old buddy Rick Upchurch would say. Kind of like a false start there as he fell into the lane. 27 to 10. Thunderwolves by 17. Canoffle gets it across the timeline. She's into the game now for Cunningham. Cross court feed to Long. Long drives into the paint. Goes all the way up. Scoop shot. No, but she drew the foul. Foul on Dockstader. That's her second. Thunderwolves continue to drive the ball to the hoop. Forcing the foul calls. Mark Knorr, he's kind of protesting down there the foul count, but Thunderwolves are the more aggressive team on both sides. Long hits the free throw. She now has five in the game. 84% free throw shooter on the year. Three for three tonight. Second toss, swish. Guess what? It's another biggest lead of the game for the Thunderwolves. They're up by 19. Seems like every other possession, they're increasing on it. Ball on the left side. They freed it to the free throw line. Docks here. Has a ball knocked away by Tule. Sue can't get the steal, though. Here's a uh, jumper on the baseline up and in. Alyssa Martinez with the bucket. She has four. It's 29 to 12. Here's Hine. Gets it ahead to Roar. Roar looking for a guard and threw it away. That's why you look for a guard. On the right side. Here's Martinez. Stops. Comes outside. Three-pointer on the way by Siemens. No good. Roar gets the rebound. Holds it high. Now finds that guard she was looking for last time. Gets it to Tule Sue. Down to a minute five to go here in the second quarter. Thunderbolts lead it 29-12. to 12. Ball on the left side. Anderson with it. Dribbles around a screen. To the top of the key. Stops. Comes right side to Long. Long to Roar. Roar backs her way into the paint. Wheels goes up with the left-hand hook. In and out. No good. Heartbreak City there. And the rebound to Rich. Ball's loose on the deck. Canoffel trying to get the steal. She has it. And the Thunderwolves get a timeout. So we got a bonus 30-second timeout. 42 seconds to go here in the second quarter. Thunderwolves lead it 29 to 12. Thunderwolves basketball brought to you by Southern Colorado Fleet and Service on Fox Sports Pueblo. here following the uh, alert timeout taken by Curtis Lloyd. He saw uh, Canoffel make the steal and laying on the deck and got to use one of those timeouts in the first half anyway, so he gets it done. Canoffel's inbounds pass comes out to Tule Sue. She starts to drive. In for the left, comes outside to Canoffel. Fakes, now steps back into the corner to Tule Sue. Anderson starts to drive to the free run. Stops and lost control of the ball. Kind of slipped out of her hands and is stolen away by Martinez. Martinez fires it in. In from the right. It's Cass. And shot block foul on Lauren Hine. That'll be her third. And that'll send Hannah Cass to the free throw line. So Cass to the line. 63% on the year. Free throw up and missed it. Second toss, swish. Pass makes one out of two. Take it, Jenna, take it. 29 to 13. Thunderwolves lead it by 16. Last shot time here as the shot clock is off. We're down to 13 to go in the quarter. Tule Sue going to go one on one here against Martinez. Tries to break her down. Ball deflected, goes out of bounds. Last touch by Tule Sue off her foot. Six seconds to go now here in the quarter. Inbounds pass to Martinez. Dribbles around a screen. One second to go. They don't get the shot off as Tule Sue deflects it out of bounds. So she comes back and plays good defense to prevent the uh, shot opportunity. The end of the first half here. Thunderwolves on top, 29 to 13. Thunderwolves basketball brought to you by Southern Colorado Fleet and Service on Fox Sports Pueblo. 
Welcome back to Masari Arena. Thunderbolts on top here, 29 to 13 at halftime. They got a quick start, led it six to nothing. Just continued to push, led it 14 to six at the end of one. And it seemed like every other possession, they were extending their biggest lead of the half. Got it to 15 to 23 to eight. Got it up to 18 to 27 to nine. Got it to 19 to 29 to 10. Black Hill State does get the last three points of the first half to make it a 29 to 13 advantage for the pack here at halftime. Molly Rohr leading the way. She has 10. Anderson and Long with six. Canoffel with five. They hold Black Hill State to 11% shooting in the first half. Three of 27. Back with more right after this. Thunderbolts basketball brought to you by Southern Colorado Fleet and Service on Fox Sports Pueblo. Welcome back to Masari Arena. 29 to 13 here at halftime. Thunderbolts on top. Let's give you the uh, numbers for this first half. Leading scorer Molly Rohr, three of seven from the field, was four of five from the free throw line. Tule Sue Anderson didn't hit a field goal, but she was six for six from the free throw line for her six points. Taylor Long, a field goal, four for four from the free throw line for six. Canoffel, two for four, included a three pointer. She had five. Lauren Hine, a field goal for two. Seven of 22 from the field. 32%, only one of seven from downtown, that's 14%, but a gaudy 14 of 15 from the free throw line, that is 93%. Black Hill State were efforting here, trying to find out if this might be close to an NCAA Division II record. Only three made field goals in the first half. We'll get to those totals here in a moment, but their leading scorers, Alyssa Martinez and Katie Messler, each with four points. Lindsey Rich has two. Erickson, Dockstater, and Cass all have one point. They were 3 for 27 from the field. That's 11%. 0 for 7 from downtown. 7 of 10 from the free throw line for 70%. Thunderbolts out rebounding, as you might expect, with all those missed shots. They're up 24 to 16 on the boards. Uh, leading rebounder, Katie Cunningham, as usual. She has 9. Roar has 5 for the pack. Leading rebounder is Lindsey Rich off the bench with 3 for Black. Black Hill State. No assists in the first half for Black Hill State. Thunderbolts had three. Hine with two. Or Thunderbolts had five. Beg your pardon. Hine with two. Cunningham with two. Adams with one. Thunderbolts did turn the ball over 11 times in the first half. Black Hill State, seven turnovers. Thunderbolts had five block shots, three of those by the defensive player of the year, Molly Rohr. She had three of them. Canoffel and Hine with the other blocks. One block shot for Black Hill State. It was by Lindsey Rich. Three steals for Black Hill State. Three steals for the Thunderwolves. Six different players with one steal in this ball game. Biggest lead of the uh, first half of the Thunderwolves was 19 when they led it 29 to 10. Black Hill State never led. The game was never tied. Come back after this timeout. We'll have the start of the second half for you. Thunderbolts on top, 29 to 13. Thunderbolts basketball brought to you by Southern Colorado Fleet and Service on Fox Sports Pueblo. And welcome back to Masari Arena. Keeping track of some other scores from today. And as usual, I have just way too much information here laying around. But the, earlier today, Mines defeated Westminster 70-59. to There was also a men's game played this afternoon. Mines uh, lost to Westminster 78-73. Some of the other games in action tonight. Uh, let's see what's happening. Mesa leads Regis 32-31. UCCS trails Fort Lewis 38-21 late in the first half. So that's some other scores for you here tonight. Thunderbolts get the ball first to start this second half. Roar with it. Original starting five out there for the Thunderbolts. Looks like the same starting five for the Yellow Jackets as well. Tule Sue goes back door to Roar underneath and had the ball stripped away from behind. Nice play there on defense by Katie Messler. Back come the Yellow Jackets. They need a quick start to this second half to try to work their way back into this game. Here's a drive into the paint. Feed back to Bertram. Jumper no good. And a rebound on the baseline. Picked out of there somehow by Siemens. He dribbles out. Comes out top. Wenches for three. Missed it. Rebound. Cunningham. Whack. Gets it anyway and then takes a shot. And still has the ball. Fans over on the baseline. Like, What's going on over there? Katie gets it across the timeline. Playing with two personal fouls is Katie Cunningham. Kynes playing with three for the pack. Here's Tule Sue on the left wing. Dribbles around the screen, and she's bumped and fouled outside. 
Black Hill State, they're very physical. Make no mistake about it, these are two of the best defensive outfits on the conference. Might be the two best. Black Hill State, they only allow 51 points a game. Now, they've had a couple of cupcakes on their schedule, which helped. They won one ball game this year, 100 to 27 in their uh, non-conference schedule. So uh, didn't exactly schedule big-time opponents. Here's Cunningham into the paint, outside to Long. She steps into a three. Swish. Taylor Long from downtown has nine. That's a good start for the pack. 32 to 13 matches their biggest lead of the game. Here's Siemens on the right wing. Holds things up, goes up top with it. To Bertram underneath. Trying to post up. Little scoop shot up and in. Nice play there by Rachel Erickson. That's her first field goal of the game. She has three. 32 to 15. Thunderbolts by 17. Erickson burned the Thunderbolts a little bit last week in that first half hitting three three pointers. Here's Cunningham. Kills the dribble in a bit of a duress. Now hands it off to Tule Sue. Might have got away with a walk there. Looked like she changed the pivot foot, but they let her get away with it. Dribbles to the top of the key. Pounded outside. Eight on the shot clock. Tule Sue starts to drive in. Drives in from the wing. Into the corner to Cunningham. Two on the shot clock. Now to Roar from the free throw line. Short as the shot clock expires. And there's a steal by Long as she took it right away from Siemens. Into the corner to Tule Sue. Steps in. Three-pointer. Swish. Tule Sue Anderson. Her first field goal of the game. 35-15. to Thunderwolves. Again, their biggest lead of the game. They're up by 20 now. Here's a drive down the lane by Erickson. Left it short. Rebound comes outside to Messler. She feeds it up top to Siemens. Siemens dribbles in. Nice bounce pass underneath. Shot up and good by Erickson. Erickson has five. She has all four points here of the second half for Black Hill State. 35-17. to Thunderbolts by 18. Cunningham breaks the pressure. Gets it across the timeline. Winch is trying to work her over, but Katie so good. Uses that size to her advantage. Here's Long. Dribbles to the top of the key. Looking for another screen. Keeps the dribble alive. Lobs it underneath the roar. Goes up and missed the banker. And the rebound to Messler. Messler going to dribble it out of there herself. Trying to go coast to coast. And she walked with the ball. She tried to take it right at Hine. Playing with three fouls. But as she got into Hine, she dragged the pivot foot. Kevin Kaziski. Motions across the way to Mark Knorr. A little pitter-patter with the feet there. I think that's what that meant. Here's Cunningham bringing it across the timeline. Thunderbolts by 18. Cunningham, all kinds of trouble. Gets rid of it to Tule Sue. Steps back, three-pointer on the way. Got it. Oh, that is such a gorgeous move. 12 for Tule Sue. 38-17. Thunderwolves. Here's an all oh, near steal by Tule Sue. Doesn't quite get it. Erickson drives in. Has the ball knocked away. Stolen. Tied up. Jump ball. Alternating possession belongs to Black Hill State. Boy, Long thought she had the clean steal. With uh, John Hafley. I was calling him Joel Hefley earlier in the game. That's the old congressman, right, from uh, the Colorado Springs area? <laughs> John Hafley. Affectionately called Mr. Clean by yours truly. Here's Messler, drives in on Roar, goes to the uh, left side, jumper by Erickson, she's got another one. She has all six points for Black Hill State here in this quarter. 38 to 19. Well, they've already matched their scoring output. There's a, a screen set by Hine, and she took it right to the chops. She set a big time screen. Both players a little worse for the wear. I think Hine's going to be a little bit better right now. Good job, And the foul going to be on Wenches. Mark Knorr, he says that calls crap. He says it was a uh, hit by uh, Hine on the screen, but it was just a powerful screen. When your player runs into a screen full speed, no, he's more mad at his team. I think he's not mad at the officials. He's mad at his players. That's what he's upset about. Nobody communicating. To say, I didn't think he'd be uh, upset with the officials on that call. Looked like a pretty good call. Here's a uh, cross court feed to Long underneath the baseline. Can't get the shot off. Goes to Cunningham. She drives into the paint. Skips it left side. Tule Sue again for three. This time it's short. Hine goes over the back. That'll be your fourth foul. And that means Kaya Adams is going to have to check into the ball game. 
So that'll be a good experience for Kaya to get in there. A little more playing time, even though the game relatively out of hand at this point. Still a lot of time left. A chance for her to play some meaningful minutes here. Ball on the right side. Now to the free throw line, turning, facing Messler. Outside, Siemens for three. Off the back iron, no good. And Cunningham rips the rebound away. She is so strong. And then draws the foul on Martinez. The only thing you worry about with Katie, when she starts to rip that ball free, that she might connect with somebody with an elbow. But she keeps them in pretty tight. She doesn't swing them. That's what they teach you. Kind of keep the elbows to your side. She does a pretty good job of it. Here's Adams. Turns, faces, look out from behind. Kaya going to stop. Goes underneath the roar. Roar now. One bounce. Hands it off to Cunningham. In for left shot. Block. Ball punched outside by Adams to Long. Missed the jumper. And the rebound underneath. To uh, pass. Gets it ahead to Siemens. Siemens fakes. Drives in. Into the corner. Jumper on the way by Erickson. No good. Roar has the rebound. Jump ball. Alternating possession belongs to the Thunderwolves. Should be a timeout, and it is. 4.46 to go here in the third quarter. Thunderwolves lead it 38 to 19. Thunderwolves basketball brought to you by Southern Colorado Fleet and Service on Fox Sports Pueblo. Thunderwolves on top. Led by as many as 21. Be the Pax ball here following the uh, jump ball call on the alternating possession. Long inbounds it to Cunningham. Katie will bring it across the timeline. It's it off to Tule Sue on the left wing. Let's see with a couple of three-pointers here. Bad pass, though. She tried to get it inside to Roar. Back the other way comes Rich. Rich hands it off to Erickson. Pulls up on the baseline. Missed it. And a rebound. They battle for it. And there's Cunningham with it. She has Adams ahead of the field. Streaking in from the right. Has it. Goes underneath the hoop. Can't get the shot off. And then throws it away. And almost ended up right in my lap. And almost took out our valuable electronic equipment. Now, I've always said if Kaya Adams ever learns to play any bit of offense, she can be dynamite. She's a great defender, has all those tools, the long build, great defender, pretty good passer. Here's the ball knocked free, and that's going to be a foul on Long as she collides with two of the Yellow Jackets. But Kaya just does not have that confidence level playing offense. Earlier in the first half, she had an easy layup and, and uh, passed it off to Roar instead and let her shoot the layup. It was a two-on-0 break. Here's the ball out top. Standing Bear with it. And Awful gets the steal. She picked the pocket that time of Rich. Head to Cunningham. Cunningham at the top of the key. Hands it off to Knoffel. Dribbles to the right wing. Now down low. Adams backs her way in. No, used the body well there, but missed the shot from point blank range. And the rebound to Black Hill State. Back the other way comes Erickson. Erickson at the free throw line. Dishes off to the baseline. Driving in. Shot blocked, but a foul on Kai Adams. Second foul on Kai, and that'll send Cortez Standing Bear to the free throw line. 87% on the year. 26 out of 30. Scoreless in tonight's game. Free throw up and good. Believe it or not, that matches the biggest run of the game right now for Black Hill State. Three in a row. Did that at the end of the first quarter when they came from 29-10 to 29-13. And it stays at three because she misses the second free throw. Adams had the rebound, and then it was knocked away out of bounds by Messler. Hopefully the stat crew is a generous lot and gives that rebound to Kaya. Full court pressure here. 
Kind of relaxed full court pressure here by Black Hill State. Cunningham gets it across the timeline, jumps it to Knopfel. Knopfel goes right side, ball deflected out of bounds. He was trying to, oh, they swayed him in. They're going to overrule that one. Ball was clearly touched by Black Hill State. Uh, well, I've been, what? come on now. Come on. Come on. Come on. you got to be kidding me. Unbelievable. Ball on the left side. Here's Erickson up top. There's a drive into the lane by Cass. Nice dish to Messler. Missed the layup. Rebound to Cunningham. She'll bring it across the timeline. Right side to Long. Long holds it there. Gives it to Cunningham. Dribbles around a screen. Wasn't a very good one. To the free throw line. Pulls up outside to Knopfel. Shot clock is down to eight. Now to Cunningham on the left wing. They're trying to find Roar on the block. Cunningham drives the baseline. Three on the shot clock. Now to Knopfel. Going to have to force it. Launches the three-pointers. The shot clock expires. Drew Iron on it. Missed it. And the rebound to Black Hill State. Back the other way comes Standing Bear. On the right side. Hands the ball off to Martinez. Martinez lobs it inside. Now down on the block, turning, facing, shot blocked by Roar, and the rebound to Adams. See, that's one there. They probably won't give her a shot block, but she definitely altered the shot. Here's Adams, comes left side to Knobble, down low to Roar, backs her way in, goes up with the left hand, banks it in. Roar with her first bucket of the second half, has 12 points in the game, timeout taken by Black Hill State. Two minutes to go in the game. It's a bonus 30. Thunderbolts lead it 40 to 20. Thunderbolts basketball brought to you by Southern Colorado Fleet and Service on Fox Sports Pueblo. <laughs> 40 to 20. Thunderbolts on top by 20. Officials usually only two of them talk at a time, but right now they're having three. They're probably over there telling John Hapley, why were you so insistent that ball was hit by the Thunderwolves on the way out of bounds? Because he was about to be overruled by uh, Rob Patchett. Everybody in the house knew it, except John. He insisted on it, and <laughs> that's why everybody went berserk over here on the uh, sideline and the fans behind us. He's not afraid to antagonize people, though. I think it's in his DNA. <laughs> yeah. Here's Siemens. Trap. And a reach-in foul on the Thunderwolves. Curtis Lloyd's still beside himself. He's getting the old Mr. Clean education from John Hafley. Here's the inbounds pass. Right side to Messler. Backs her way to the free throw line. Now comes outside. To Noble, up top to Siemens. Siemens comes right side. Dox Tater with it, skips it left side. Three pointer on the way, it's short. Rebound on the block taken by Adams, and she hands it off to Cunningham. Cunningham will bring it across the timeline. Gives it off to Knopfel. Knopfel lobs it inside to Roar. Ball batted away from behind. Good play there on defense by Standing Bear. And back the other way comes Noble. Lobs into the corner. Now back pass to Standing Bear. She moves in. Cut off there. Pass comes outside. Now the top of the key. Three-pointer on the way by Noble. Swish. They left her wide open. And Noble buries it. Her first bucket of the game. 40-23. to 23. Thunderwolves on top by 17. We're under a minute to go here in the third quarter. Cunningham holds it. In trouble, lobs it up top to Knopfel. Left side to Long. Long now to Knopfel. Seven on the shot clock. Left side, Long drives the baseline. Goes up, tried to scoop it up, missed it. Messler got the uh, rebound or turnover, however you want to look at it. 30 seconds to go. Here's Standing Bear to the free throw line. Nobody cuts her off. She goes up, in from the right, missed it. And the rebound to Roar at the Cunningham. Cunningham fires it ahead to Knopfel, streaking down the lane. Right hand layup, good. Knopfel has seven. Another brilliant assist from Katie Cunningham. 42 to 23. Thunderwolves by 19. Here's Siemens bringing it across the timeline. 
Dribbles to the right elbow. Now scoops it up with the right hand. Missed it. Rebound batted into the baseline. We got a whistle and a foul here on the Thunder Wolves. Foul is on Kaya Adams. And that'll mean free throws for Noble as the Thunder Wolves over the limit here. Free throw good. One more for Danielle Noble, junior out of Cheyenne. Only her third game this year for the Yellow Jackets. Played for Northern Colorado for transferring to Black Hill State. That's the buzzer to end the third quarter. Thunderwolves on top, 42 to 25 as we head to the fourth quarter. Thunderwolves basketball brought to you by Southern Colorado Fleet and Service on Fox Sports Pueblo. Well, a little bit better quarter that time for Black Hill State. They get 12 points in the third quarter. Erickson had a hot start to the third quarter, got the first six. And Noble with five. Forty-two twenty-five. Thunderwolves on top. Tule Sue Anderson had a couple three-pointers in that quarter. Taylor Long also a three-pointer. So Anderson with twelve. Roar with twelve to lead the way for the pack. Long has nine. Can awful with seven off the bench. Thunderwolves by seventeen. Here's Erickson running left-hander down the lane. She hits. Erickson has eight. I beg your pardon. She has nine. Now we have the ball knocked away out of bounds. Yeah, Rachel Erickson with nine. Eight of them here in the second half. She had a free throw in the first half. That's where I was missing it. Inbounds pass to Knopfel. Dribbles to the top of the key, hands it off to Adams, comes left side to Cunningham. It's the closest uh, Black Hill State has been in a while. Two Lace, who stepped back three on the way, missed it. And the ball comes outside, it's loose on the deck, and Black Hill State comes up with it. Messler brings it across the timeline, hounded, gets rid of it. Noble. Noble works around a screen. Wants to launch a three-pointer. Can't get it off. Goes to Messler. She drives into the paint. Cut off into the corner to Erickson. Here's a three-pointer on the way by Erickson. No good. Cunningham with a rebound on the baseline. Cunningham with 15 rebounds tonight. <laughs> she loves to rebound. Cross-court feed. Knopfel for three. Off the iron. No good. Rebound underneath to Erickson. Bad pass. Knopfel can't quite get the steal. The old Noble comes away with it. Brings it across the timeline. In from the right. Bumped all the way. It was a foul waiting to happen there on Kaya Adams and finally got a piece of her. That's her fourth. Inbounds pass to Messler. Messler up top now to Siemens. Siemens. To Messler in the paint, wheels, goes outside, three-pointer on the way, it's good. Now, don't look now, the uh, Yellow Jackets are within 12 all of a sudden. It's 42 to 30 as they've scored seven in a row. Here's Knopfel on the left baseline. Drives the baseline, goes in, shot block foul, and that'll get Knopfel to the free throw line. Knopfel on the year, 55%, 6 out of 11 from the line. Free throws up, no good. Curtis Lloyd right now in a little spot of bother as he's seen this uh, once comfortable game get a little tighter here. And you start missing free throws, that'll make you even more chagrined. Second toss, rims in and out. Tule Sue fights for it and gets the rebound. 
So safe possession, bad pass, but it's tracked down by Cunningham on the baseline. She drives in, goes into the corner to Tulesu, fakes, drives into the paint, goes outside to Knoffel. Knoffel in from the right, running right hander, no, but she drew the foul. Two shots for Jenna Knoffel. So Knopf will just missed a pair. He has a chance to right the ship here. And misses another one. And hits. 43-30. Thunderwolves by 13. Black Hill State, they get hit triple here, get it within 10. Here Siemens drives the baseline and a uh, foul on Knoffel. As Siemens fake and Knoffel rode right over the top of her. Did not get the shot off though as uh, Knoffel clobbered or wouldn't allow the shot up. So it'll be just a common foul on the baseline. That's two fouls on Knoffel. Long back in now for the Thunderwolves. Inbounds pass to Erickson. She drives underneath. Hands it off the cast. Shot blocked by Rohr. Ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Black Hill State. Rohr credited with four block shots. That should be her fifth right there. Trouble on the inbounds. Inbounds pass to Adams. Now to Tule Sue. Anderson gets it off to Long. And now Long will work it herself and bring it across the timeline. She's trapped, gets rid of bad pass. Stolen away by Messler ahead to Bertram. In from the right shot, blocked by Long. Two free throws upcoming for Bertram. So the press forcing the turnover there. And it'll put Bertram to the free throw line. Free throw up and good. Bertram on the year, 65% from the line. Second toss. Rims in and out and in again. Five points for Bertram. 11-point lead for the Thunderwolves. Long on the left wing. Steps back. She's trapped. Gets rid of it to Cunningham. Boy, this defense is tenacious right now. Here's Cunningham backing her way into the paint. Steps back. Can't get the shot off. Goes to Roar at the free throw line. She moves in. Goes up with a running left hander. Missed it. Adams has the rebound in the paint. Passes to Roar. Roar rips it free. Shot block foul. Tell you what, Black Hill State, they are in your face and they play hard. Just as hard as the Thunderwolves. Making them earn it here. The foul called on Messler. And that'll be Roar to the line to shoot a pair. Four of five from the stripe tonight. Free throws up and good. Roar will have one more. Second toss, good. Hein will check in. Roar will come out. Get her a little bit of rest for the stretch run here. As Hine playing with four fouls now. Thunderwolves a little full court pressure here. Trap when they get a chance. It's just man to man. Well, now they go for the trap. Don't get it, though. Now moving in from their right, it's Erickson. Jumper is up on the way, and she hits. Erickson has 11. 10 here in the second half. It's 45-34. Thunderwolves by 11. Here's this full court pressure. Anderson able to break it, gets it across the timeline. Black Hill State continuing to play hard. Here's Tule Sue. Oh, wild shot there, but she drew the foul. They just bumped her and shoved her out of the way there. And Tule Sue, like a great offensive player will do, just throws it up when she hears the whistle. And she'll go to the free throw line. 12, this is like... Been an hour and a half in the greenhouse here, man. It is tough. These two uh, programs in their short history have played some pretty meaningful, great basketball games. You think about the Thunderwolves winning that game last year on the last second shot by... Uh, 
Jasmine Johnson. Black Hill State broke the Thunderwolves' heart in the regional a couple years back. Anderson hits a pair. She has 14. It's 47-34. Thunderwolves on top. Erickson brings it across the timeline. 6.15 to go here, and now we have a problem with the shot clock. Probably should be about 23, if I had to guess. Well, one's out on the left side, and the one on the right side is lit up, but it never, it didn't start correctly. So they're going to have to, uh, well, that means suddenly, when you see Dax Larson make his way toward the equipment room, you know, there's something afoot here. So we got an official's timeout here while we look for another shot clock, evidently. So, see what the conversation is over here. Try to pick it up. So, it's like a, a timeout on the court. I'll tell you what, we're going to go ahead and take one here. 47 34, Thunderwolves on top by 13. Thunderwolves basketball brought to you by Southern Colorado Fleet and Service on Fox Sports Pueblo. Still a continuing problem with the shot clock. Uh, I might have a hammer in my bag. That usually works, Joe. I used to work on our old TV at home. You hit it on the side real hard. Remember those old consoles? Boom! You hit it like that, and everything would work again. They tried the old power on, power off. That didn't work because it didn't light up again. So they're trying to turn it off now at the scores table and reset it. Joe Folden, his final couple months as athletic director, didn't want to see there. It lit up for a second. They had it on for a second, so that's a connection issue. Whatever the guy's doing up there on the ladder, he's wiggling a wire, and it, it came on momentarily, so that's where the issue is. Now yeah, it's back on. Now they got it lit up again, so that's where the problem It's a connection on the, uh, the fan starting to applaud, and that went out again. So what we may have to do is find somebody to crawl up on there and hold the wires together while the game is being played. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Now they got it lit up again. Now they're making sure it'll work. They uh, run it, and it does work. The uh, clock is operational as well. Now there is... Tessa, the trainer, brings over some athletic tape. That's always good. Good job, Tessa. Never thought her tape job would be this important in a ball game. You know, they didn't put any of that pre-wrap, though, on it, though, Joe. That could be an issue later when they try to rip it off. And yeah, now, well, now the tape is unplugged it again. Oh, my. Always something. Yeah, poor Joe. Well, the more tape he puts on it, the worse it's getting here. He needs to stop when he wraps that way and then stop right there. So stop right. Nope. He goes for a little bit more tape, and then the light goes out again. So we got a little bit of a delay here, of course. Men's game to follow here later on the night. Now, the more tape he puts on that thing, the worse off it's getting here. So it's all about the connection. Now. Yep. Continue to work on it. I tell you what, while they continue to work on it, we're going to go ahead and take care of some more of our uh, sponsors to bring you Thunderwolves basketball. Thunderwolves on top by 13. Thunderwolves basketball brought to you by Southern Colorado Fleet and Service on Fox Sports Pueblo. Well, they've uh, removed all the athletic tape off the connection, and now they're going to uh, go at it a different way. You know, it upsets me. I had a little roll of electrician's tape on my desk at Don's sport car yesterday. I could have packed that in the bag. That'd be probably much better off than this athletic tape. Yep, they're going to try a different roll now. And they continue to work on it. I'm not, I haven't met this guy. They got up here on the ladder that's trying to make it work. Now, 
continue to work. I'll tell you what, while we're waiting here, let's go ahead and get some updates from around the conference here. Our Internet's been spotty here tonight. They've been having issues with that on the campus this weekend as well. Fort Lewis has defeated UCCS. The final there is 69-57. to So Fort Lewis, they remain right on the heels of the Thunderwolves. They are now 9-1 and one in conference play. Their one loss, of course, to the pack. Let's see what else we can find here. And now, uh, well, this one hasn't updated for a while for us either, so we'll refresh that screen. Looks like they've got it operational again here. Regis leads Mesa. They are in double overtime. 16 seconds to go in that game. What a battle there. 72 to 67. Regis leads Mesa. So we'll await the final coming in on that one. Could be our ball, right? Curtis Lloyd trying to steal a possession. Yeah, you know, it's worth an, an effort trying to make sure it's your ball there, Curtis. Nice job. And now, whatever they did, it still didn't work. So they're just going to play with one shot clock, evidently. Could have decided that 10 minutes ago. They had to make the effort and try to get it done. South Dakota Mines knocks off Highlands tonight, 71-55. to That's the other final we have in from Armac women's play. One men's game in the books already earlier this afternoon. Westminster defeated Mines, 78-73. So it's Black Hill State ball here as we resume. 6.15 to go. 20 on the shot clock for Black Hill State. Feet to the high post, reach in foul on Tule Sue Anderson. That's the fourth team foul on the Thunderwolves. That's Tule Sue's second. So we're shooting free throws from here on out. Inbounds pass into the corner. Rich, now the Siemens, now down on the block. That's double dribble, isn't it? Back to Rich, left side to Erickson, drives into the paint, running left hander, good. Erickson with 13, 12 of them here in the second half. 47-36. Thunderwolves lead is 11. Cunningham will bring it across the timeline. Cunningham to the free throw line. Down the lane, goes up and under with a left hand scoop up and in. First bucket of the game for Katie Cunningham. 49-36. Thunderwolves by 13. Here's Siemens. Way outside. Curtis Lloyd wants his team to lock it down right here. Here's Siemens on the wing, up top. Can't get the three off. They feed it. Oh, nice backdoor pass layup. Good. By Hannah Cass. Cass's first field goal. She has three. It's 49-38. Kai Adams in the backcourt. That's not who you want handling the basketball. She gets it across the timeline. Curtis Lloyd uh, wisely going to take a timeout here. 5.09 to go here in the second half. This is a bonus 30-second timeout. Thunderwolves lead at 49-38. Thunderwolves basketball. Brought to you by Southern Colorado Fleet and Service on Fox Sports Pueblo. Thunderwolves ball following the uh, timeout. Cunningham will get it across the timeline. Pack leads it by 11. Here's Anderson on the left wing. We're at the five-minute mark here. Tulay Sue at the free throw line. Cut off there. Three on the shot clock. Step back three-pointer on the way. Banks it up no good. Adams bats the rebound outside and chases it down. Gets the pass outside to Tulay Sue and they'll reset. Left side to Cunningham. Cunningham drives to the baseline. Cut off there. Lobs it up top to Adams at the free throw line. Couple of bounces. Hands it off to Long. Long with 15 on the shot clock. Gives it off to Anderson. Anderson now down to 10 on the shot clock. Dribbles to the left wing. Reach in foul on Black Hill State. That'll send Tule Sue to the free throw line. And now 
we're going to take the media timeout. You think we'll, uh, the timeout's while we're doing the basket problem with the shot clock could have taken the place of that, but nope, they stay on form. 4.26 to go here in the fourth quarter. Thunderbolts by 11. Thunderbolts basketball brought to you by Southern Colorado Fleet and Service on Fox Sports Pueblo. Thirty-eight Thunderbolts on top. It'll be Tule Sue Anderson at the free throw line. She's a cool eight for eight from the line so far tonight. Had to sit though during this uh, last timeout. Sometimes that was the old strategy. Remember the old days when they'd freeze you all the time with the timeouts. Free throw up and good. Doesn't bother. Mama T, as she's affectionately called around here. For our Black Hills State fans tuning in, she had twins in the offseason. Played last year uh, pregnant with those twins for a couple months of the season. It's the second. She has 16. It's 51-38. Yo-yoing the ball outside here. And now we get a foul as one of the Thunderbolts fighting through a screen. I'm working through a screen. Foul is on Cunningham. For the third. We're watching the stretch internet feed. You can see uh, Curtis Lloyd. He's standing right in my line of sight. And he's a big man. It's like a total eclipse. It's Messler at the free throw line. Free throw grazes the front iron. That barely... Got there for Messler. 54% on the year. She hit two in the uh, first half. She'll have one more here. Be ready to rebound. Second toss. Missed it badly. And Tule Su skies and gets the rebound. He dribbles it out of harm's way. Hands it off the hind return feed to Anderson. Tule Su will get it across the timeline to Cunningham. Under four now to go here in the fourth quarter. Thunderwolves on top by 13. Tule Su Anderson on the wing. Oop, almost walked it. Kills the dribble. Gets rid of it to Long. Ten on the shot clock. Long drives in. Running left hander shot block goes out of bounds. It'll belong to the Thunderbolts. Six on the shot clock. Anderson to trigger it in on the baseline. Hits it in the long. Drives in. Called for traveling. Knopfel will check in now, and Long will come out for the pack. 3.42 to go. Thunderwolves on top by 13. One, one. Siemens now will bring it across the timeline for the Yellow Jackets. Even if they have one last run in them here. Ball down to the high post, turning, facing. Noble, jumper, no good. She chases down the rebound. Here's a feed inside, and Noble all stripped away, and it goes right to Roar. Not sure who got the uh, steal there. Here's Cunningham. Gets it ahead to Anderson. Anderson on the right wing. Starts a drive. Steps back. Can't get the jumper off. Works around a screen by Hine. Keeps the dribble alive. We're down to 15 on the shot clock. Cross court feed to Cunningham. Ball knocked away out of bounds. It'll belong to the pass. An awful to trigger it in. Gets it into Cunningham. Drives the baseline. Goes underneath the basket. Passes outside. Up top to Knopfel. Underneath the roar. Roar on the baseline. Goes up with the right hand. No, but she drew the foul. Foul will be on Erickson. That'll send Molly Roar to the free throw line. Molly is 6 of 7 from the free throw line tonight. Has 14 points in the game. Free throws up, in and out, no good. Might be the first time this year she's missed two free throws in a game. I'd have to check on that, but it hasn't been many if that is the case. Second toss, good. She has 15. 52. 38. Thunderbolts by 14. Erickson hands it off to Messler. Moves in. And she traveled with the ball. She was hounded that time by Knopfel. Forced the travel. Kaya, 
Well, on back-to-back -back nights, the Thunderwolves have handled the South Dakota teams here who came in, the uh, leading scorers in the conference. We might have a knee injury out front here for uh, Erickson. She gets up limping a little bit. Now looks like she's under full steam for Black Hill State. Cunningham drives the baseline, stops offensive foul on Katie Cunningham. Four fouls on Katie. 2.25 to play. Thunderwolves on top, 52-38. to 38. Grinder of a basketball game here tonight. Here's Martinez. Brings it across the timeline for the Yellow Jackets. Works around a screen. Down the lane. Stops and pops and missed it. Rebound. Adams has it for the Thunderwolves and a reaching foul on Black Hill State. And the foul is on Noble. Third foul on Noble. And that'll send Kaya Adams to the free throw line. To shoot a pair. Kaya, 7 for 9 from the free throw line this year. 78%. The sophomore on a Falcon, Colorado. Free throw up and off the back iron. No good. She'll have one more. Flips it up and missed that one. Tule Sue battles for the rebound. Can't snare it, though, and Siemens takes it away. Siemens brings it across the timeline for the Yellow Jackets. Dribbles to the right wing. Now backs out of there. Dribbles around the screen to the free throw line. Down the lane. Dishes it off to Messler. Loss. It regains it. Beat out top. Here's Noble moving into the lane. In from the right. Dishes off to Messler. Can't get the shot off. Now forces it up. Missed it badly. They get the rebound. Layup good. Pretty strong play there by Noble to get the rebound up off the glass and in. Timeout taken by the Yellow Jackets. 140 to go here in the fourth quarter. Thunderbolts lead at 52 to 40. It's a bonus 30. Thunderbolts basketball brought to you by Southern Colorado Fleet and Service on Fox Sports Pueblo. Two to forty. Thunderwolves with the ball. Cunningham, or excuse me, Anderson gets it across the timeline. Ball knocked away, and Tulesu reaches in, ties it up. They save the possession on the alternating jump. There's Lloyd employing his ball club past the ball. Don't try to dribble through the break or the press so much. Long checks back in. Hine comes out, so a little bit more guard-oriented offense here, although Cunningham very much at home down on the block, but she'll come out and handle the ball as well. Inbounds pass to Cunningham. Come at her with a quick trap. Dribbles through it, goes up top to Long, and she'll fire the three-pointer off the back iron. No good. And then she fouls. Not what the Thunderwolves need at this point, ahead by 12, but I think they're out of harm's way. Foul on Taylor. Is her fourth. So we walk down to the other end to shoot free throws. It'll be Danielle Noble. In only her third game with Black Hill State, transfer from Northern Colorado. Missed the first free throw. She's from Cheyenne, Wyoming. Second toss. Got that one. So she has eight. It's 52-41. Thunderwolves by 11. An awful. Dribbles into the forecourt and uh, reach in foul on Black Hill State. That'll send Canopo to the free throw line. Fourth foul on Noble. And that'll send Canoffel to the free throw line. One for four from the stripe tonight. Free throw up and good this time. Fifty-three forty-one. Second toss. Got that one as well. Double figures for Canoffel. She has ten. It's fifty-four to forty-one. Erickson races across the timeline. Thunderwolves lead the game by 13. We're close to the minute mark. Here's a backdoor feed underneath. Layup. No foul. Going to be on 
Roar, evidently. And Curtis Lloyd wants a timeout. A minute one to go here in the fourth quarter. Thunderwolves lead it 54-41. It's a bonus 30. Thunderwolves basketball on Fox Sports Pueblo. Brought to you by Southern Colorado Fleet and Service. And welcome back to Masari Arena. First free throw no good by Julia Siemens. She's scoreless in tonight's game. 50% on the year. Man, under 50% now. And back to 50%. This is 5 of 10. So it's 54-42. Full court pressure here by Black Hill State. Inbounds to Knoffel. Knoffel breaks the pressure. Gets it ahead to Cunningham. Wide open is Roar underneath the basket. And she's got it and she lays it in. Roar has 17. 56-42. Thunderwolves by 14. Here's a drive by Erickson. Running left-hander. Missed it this time. Rebound batted outside. Noble has it. Starts a drive. Cut off on the wing. Goes down underneath the basket. Shot. Foul on Roar. And the bucket will count as Anna Cass gets it up off the glass. Drew the foul. And a chance for the three-point play. And that'll be foul number three on Molly Roar. Roar out. Hine in. I mean, Marley, Molly, sorry, Molly. Chance for the three-point play here for Hannah Cass. 63% free throw shooter on the year. One of two from the stripe tonight. Free throw up and good. She has six. 56-45. Full court pressure here by the Yellow Jackets. Down to 37 seconds to go. Anderson gets it in the long. Long harassed in the backcourt. Kills the dribble. Gets rid of it. To Knoffel. Knoffel fires it ahead to Cunningham. Nice pass to Hine. Fakes goes up and banks it in. Hine with four. Another assist for Cunningham. It's 58-45. Long down court feed. Left side. Here's Noble. Feeds it up top to Siemens. She's going to jack up a three ball. It's off the iron. No good. Ball loose in the corner. Out of bounds. It'll belong to the Thunderwolves. And Chelsea Vallejos checks into the game. Tule Sue will come out. What a game for Tule Sue Anderson. She looks a little winded, maybe grimacing a little bit, maybe in pain a little bit. Here's the inbounds pass. It's deflected and stolen, and there is the uh, drive down the lane. Missed the layup, though. Nine seconds ago, Cunningham lost the rebound. Now they tie it up. Alternating possession belongs to Black Hill State, evidently. And they called a foul, evidently, on Cunningham. The fans, one last chance to boo. Let's go, Casey. So Cunningham fouls out. Well, she fouled out last week against Black Hill State. Fouls out again tonight. That type of opponent. Free throw up and good by Bertram. She has six, all of them here in the fourth quarter. Second toss, good for Bertram. One thing we learned tonight, Curtis Lloyd got a taste of the John Hafley experience. <laughs> Inbounds pass to Jones. Hands it off to Vallejos. She'll dribble it out, and that is the ball game. Thunderbolts win it 58-47. to 47. Stay tuned for the Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap House postgame show. We'll talk to the head coach, Curtis Lloyd. We'll decide who we're going to talk to right after this on Fox Sports Pueblo. And welcome back. Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap House postgame show. We thought we might have a condensed between games, but uh, not so because they got to fix the shot clock with a more permanent solution over there. So they haven't even bothered to start the 20-minute countdown. So we'll probably have another relaxed postgame show here. 
We're going to talk to Tule Sue Anderson and Curtis Lloyd. Those will be our post-game guests here on Fox Sports Pueblo as part of the Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap House post-game show. We'll also uh, get you updated on the uh, final book. Give you scores from around the country as well. Thunderwolves win it here. It was a grinder. They got outscored in that fourth quarter, 22-16 to by Black Hill State, but they built up such a big lead that they're able to hold on. But give credit to the Yellow Jackets for playing tough to the end there. And that, that's a kind of ball club you don't want to have to face again if you're the Thunderwolves. And it's one of those things, we look at the standings, that may be one of those things that does happen later on down the year because Black Hill State, they're just kind of flirting with that uh, eight spot and the Thunderwolves right now in the one spot and that's who you'd face in the uh, shootout. But uh, we'll just see how the uh, season shapes out. But they are a tough outfit. Make no mistake about it. Take this time out. We'll have more of the Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap House post game show. All comes your way next on Fox Sports Pueblo. Welcome back to Masari Arena. Happy to report they've got the uh, shot clock issue taken care of. they got a more permanent solution, and the teams are out warming up for the men's game, which will start in about 20 minutes from now. they got 18.35 on the clock, but, of course, you got to factor in the anthem and all the other stuff that takes place before the ball game. So we should get the men's game started. Oh, will probably be uh, more exacting, probably around, uh, probably closer to 7.57, somewhere in there, when the men's game finally tips later on this evening. Thunderwolves women survive here tonight, win at 58-47. to We'll talk to Tule Sue Anderson, who's now the fifth all-time leading scorer in Thunderwolves history with 1,279 points. She's moved ahead now of Mary Rayfeld, one of the all-time greats for the Thunderwolves, who had 1,259. Next up will be Annette Smith. Smith, who's at 1367, and if she really gets after it, it'll be uh, Vallejos, Sherry Vallejos, later on in the season. More of our Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap House postgame show. It all comes your way next. Thunderbolts basketball on Fox Sports Pueblo. Welcome back, Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap House post game show. And joining us, our star of the game, Tule Sue Anderson tonight, 16 points, five rebounds, the newly minted fifth all time leading scorer Yay. in Thunderwolves basketball history. Now, Tule Sue, that game tonight, that was a grind. That was a tough, hard nosed game. I can probably get count, re- watch the game again, probably 10 times you got hit in the head oh, yeah. with uh, reach ins. You know, they's gotta, they can't call everything, as they say, uh, but yeah. uh, it was that kind of ball game. Yeah. Um, always playing Black Hills. Ever since I was a freshman, they've always been super, super hard to guard. They're super fast. They're, 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 I don't even know how to. Tenacious. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, I don't even know how. They're just really, really aggressive. And it's really, really hard to play against a team like that. So, I mean, props to them for their aggressiveness. It really, like, wakes us up, definitely. Well, one thing you know about that outfit. They know what it's like to play a tough, tenacious outfit. You guys are yeah. pretty aggressive on that defensive yeah. end. It's the beauty to watch if you like defensive basketball. Yeah. Um, coach always emphasizes um, defensive mindset, and having a new coach, that's what he Im- implanted in the, um, the the beginning of the season, and we all just bought into the defensive mindset, so I guess it's just paying off now. Well, before we talk a little bit more about the ball, let's talk about your mindset. you got the Twins oh, yes, at do. home. Now, was, was there ever the thought in the offseason, you know what, I probably should be done with basketball, or was it always that thought, you know what, I'm going to get back out there on the court? Yeah, there wasn't even a thought that I wasn't going to come back. There was a lot of people doubting me, saying, I don't think, I think you should take the year off, like, you should take the year off, and I was like, no! I'm not going to do that. I just so, well, even while I was pregnant, I stayed working out. And then right when I had the boys, as soon as I could start working out again, I started working out. It took me a little bit to get back into the groove. Still kind of getting back into the groove, but there's nothing I want more than to be playing, especially with this group of girls. So. Well, I think that's the key. My wife continued working out when she was pregnant. I, yeah. I think that's the key. you got to stay in it shape is. as long as yeah, you can, yeah. and you come back better. Yeah, it's definitely, like, not the normal way of working out. Right. Not, not that I'm used to. 
but I mean, it's it's all worth it. I'm very blessed with my babies, um, Quincy and Melo Henry. So yeah, I'm real happy. Well, back to the ball game. I mean, this game you hit a couple of those three point. I think that's what gave the team final separation there. Really put the game away. They did make a little bit of a run at you, yeah. but talk about those two threes you hit uh, um, early in the second half there. Yeah, it was just it was just within the offense. Um, I I rushed a, a few of them in the and I think in the first half, but I just knew that the ball will come back to me. I'll just trust my teammates, just let it flow, and then it came back to me, and I just happened to hit the shot. Well, nine and zero now in conference play. Fort Lewis right on your heels. You can't relax though, can you? Definitely not. We got a big target on our back, so we just got to come out 100, percent 110 percent every single game. All right, tell everybody at home back there in Vancouver. Hi everybody, she happy is. birthday, Keely, and I'll see you guys soon. Love you. The star of the game, Tule Sue Anderson, back with Curtis Lloyd right after this on Fox Sports Pueblo. Welcome back, Thunders. I got you a little hot there, didn't I? Somebody came over and jacked with the audio <laughs> levels. They uh, blew your ears out there. Somebody, I you know, can't pay Ouch. attention to everything, but <laughs> now you know you're live. Now you'll have that ringing in your ears like I have the rest of my life. Okay. But the, the head coach, Curtis Lloyd. And Curtis, that was a, a grinder of a basketball game. Probably the kind fun. of game you like. That was fun. Yeah. That was fun. The, the, the last two games we had was fun, you know, because uh, it posed different styles for us, something that we need in this conference to kind of keep us on our toes and our kids did a great job. Well, we talked about a little bit the pregame show, and it was carrying the same formula, six points first quarter, seven in the second. I mean, you're holding them down. Now, they had 22 there in that fourth quarter, but hard to keep up that intensity, I guess, for the whole ball game and give a good team credit. They they never gave up in that ball game against you. Well, we knew that they were going to make a run. We were just trying to kind of figure out when, when it was going to come. You know, I mean, that's just basketball. That's basketball. Right. You know, and you're right. We can't keep up that same intensity, but the thing that I, I was trying to do is sub them and bring them back down to a seven speed you know yeah when they get handsy and pressure like that it amps them up and you got to calm them back down stay within you know because then they start fouling we start fouling no, right. no 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 we don't want that right you know but our kids did a great job and coming off the bench getting a quick blow getting back in there getting back into the fight well he started off right in the first quarter he held him scoreless through the first time out i think it was six to nothing and finally you guys started to hit some shots and it seemed like every other trip you were increasing lead the biggest lead of the game biggest lead in the game you never took the foot off the pedal and and that was the whole pregame of, of keeping it mashed down you know because we have to you know i mean for us to really do something special here we got to separate ourselves and not stay you know amongst the you know the teams that are you know beneath us right now right. so we'll take advantage of this but we know people are coming for us we know they're going to double molly we know they're going to play this way we know they're going to press and it's just a matter of our preparation and keeping those kids very very focused all right congratulations another win thank you nine thank and zero in conference play there he is the head coach curtis lloyd back we'll talk to ralph turner as we transition to our men's coverage right after this thunderwolves basketball it is the thunder zone pizza and tap house post game show on fox go thunderwolves yeah <laughs> 